Hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome to the United Stand. Some big news coming in for you. In fact, we should call this video from the training ground because Man United's first team have been back in training today and discussions have been had with Ten Hag and some of those players on who is incoming, but more importantly, who, who is outgoing. We'll be talking about that. Also, Amrabat, a player that Man United would like but can't afford. They're asking him to wait. Liverpool could just swoop in and do this deal. How serious uh, of a threat is Liverpool to any deal United think they can do with Amrabat. We'll be talking about that as well. So lots to get into. Um, and talking about the conversations Ten Hag's had with some players about leaving the club and the likelihood of that happening. Remember, we're sponsored by Manscaped today, but we're not trimming the grass to make the yard look bigger. I'm really excited about this. I had a new package from Manscaped and uh, they are introducing beard products with the revolutionary Beard Hedger, shaping your unique look from a tidy trim to a fresh shave has never been easier. Look at the size of that. Absolutely fantastic. The thing I love about this is I, when I shave, I like to keep a bit of stubble. And the one I've got upstairs has got like a, a one is the minimum. This goes down to 0 0.5, so you can, st which is really tight, but there is still a bit of stubble there. Fantastic bit of kit. You can get 20% off plus free shipping. They still do the lawnmower and all that stuff, trim the grass to make the yard look bigger, but uh, they've got the Beard Hedger now, which uh, eradicates all your stubble trouble. Um, cordless, of course, as I say, uh, just whack it in for uh, for a charge, but away you go. 20 different beard lengths at your finger pricks, uh, at your finger, finger, finger tips, not your finger pricks, your fingertips. Um, absolutely fantastic beard hedger, uh, caters to all beard lengths, like I say, and it is waterproof as well. So 20% uh, off, free worldwide shipping with the Code United stand. Well happy with that. And uh, they just keep going up the gears, don't they? Landscaped. It was all about down there. Now they're doing it up here. And I've got to say, I'm very happy with it. Um, make sure you check it out, Manscaped. 20% off, free worldwide shipping. Links in the video description or scan that QR code. Right, let's get into what we were talking about then. Um, from the training ground, Man United have been in training today. Ten Hag has had conversations with players. Um, interesting chats uh, with somebody this afternoon. And uh, we can give you some updates on what's going on with outgoings. Uh, I want to talk about Amrabat and how... Um, concerning Liverpool's interest is uh, Fabinho about to sign for a Saudi Arabian club for £40 million um, and Liverpool looking to buy a replacement with Amrabat on their shortlist. United absolutely powerless to do anything about it is what I was told. Um, they do like the player, they would like to buy the player but they haven't got any money and ultimately they won't have any money until they sell somebody and they haven't sold anybody yet which feeds into all your frustrations and concerns and worries and anxiety that it is the middle of July, and for some unknown reason, United have decided to spend six weeks selling nobody. Look, there's people out there that defend our recruitment team. There's people out there that defend what we're doing. Please, please inform us and educators on why United have not decided to sell anybody yet. And there you will find out whether you think it's good or bad, and it has to ultimately be bad, that is why any day any deal for Amrabat is in danger because we don't have the money because we've not sold anybody. So we'll circle back to Amrabat in a moment, but let's uh, discuss what's happened in training today for Manchester United. Everybody's back: Harry Maguire, Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes. All the internationals are back. Obviously, Mason Mount drove in with Luke Shaw today, um, and that's what Ten Hag goes with at the moment. He's got everybody back, and that's what he's training with. Now, there has been conversations in the last couple of weeks already with the likes of Alanga and Fred, and that's why there's developments with those players and potential transfers. Eric Bay and Tellez have been told a long time ago to find other clubs. So those four players are advanced in the sense that, you know, their agents are out there talking and trying to get deals done. Uh, Brandon Williams has been told to look for another club as well. Whether he can find one, that'll be interesting. Donny van der Beek has been spoken to. Again, if he can find a club, the club will the, the club will entertain it. So there's six players there that have been training and around Carrington for a couple of weeks now. They've had the chat with Eric Ten Hag and you can expect a lot of those players to move on. Obviously, Dean Henderson as well. As soon as Anana's in, he'll be allowed to go. That deal's there with Nottingham Forest. So that's seven players and that's quite a significant number of players to go. Now, unfortunately, the clue is there in the numbers. I've just named six or seven players there that are allowed to go. 
We're probably only going to sign three or five, three or four, maybe five. I can't see us selling 10 players. And to sell beyond the seven I've just named there, that means, you know, the likelihood of a Harry Maguire or a Scott McTominay or an Anthony Martial or a Jaden Sancho or any other name that people think should be leaving this club, it's looking unlikely. Um, what I was told this afternoon is that in relation to Scott McTominay, it's very much um, expected that he will stay. And it's very much expected that Eric Ten Hag wants him to stay. Um, there certainly wasn't any conversation about you're up for sale, go and find a club. There might be a conversation if somebody comes in with a good bid. Um, because actually, you know, when you're running a football club, you don't necessarily put people up for sale. But if an offer comes in, you might listen to it. This has happened a lot, of, a lot with a lot of clubs. You know, look at Jordan Henderson with Liverpool. They didn't have any intention of selling him. And then suddenly an offer comes in and it's like, oh, this might be suitable for all parties. So I wouldn't rule that out with McTominay, but at the moment, he's certainly not a player that Ten Hag is saying move on, especially when he might not have an Amrabat coming in. And Fred is definitely going to go. In relation to Harry Maguire, the conversation there is basically that, look, from my point of view, Eric Ten Hag, um, I'm happy to go with the centre box backs I had last season. I'm not looking to bring one in at the moment. Obviously, we failed on Kim Min Jae. We're not in talks with any other centre back. So Eric Ten Hag has to look at it and go, look, four centre backs, Maguire, Lindelof, Varane, Martinez. We go with that again. That's his stance. Um, it's not what he wanted to do. He wanted Kim Min Jae, but that's not happened. So he's sort of like, well, look, I can't just sell Maguire and not have anybody. And I don't know whether I can sell Maguire. Um, the conversation with Maguire has been very much about what he wants to do. If he wants to stay, they'll accommodate that. If he wants to go, they'll look at that. But he's really got to do the work on that because he's on 200 grand a week. And where does he go? Um, it goes to back to a lot of what we've been talking about. I mean, realistically, if you're Harry Maguire, what do you do? If you're Scott McTominay, what do you do? Personally, I'd look at it and go, yeah, I'm at a great club, Man United, but I'm nowhere near the first team. I've got, off, I've got options to go and play first team football, especially in the case of Harry Maguire, because I think he's going to lose his England place in the next 12 months. I really do think that there's a couple of centre backs, Colwell's one of them, will, that will take his spot. So I don't think he can rely on the uh, nepotism of Southgate for another year. So I think he needs to go and play first team football. Now, he might back himself to think he's going to get his place back in the United shirt. Um, I've heard some people already saying Anana will bring the best out of Maguire. Well, Anana will bring the best out of Martinez, Varane and Lindelof as well. And therefore, there'll be three centre-backs ahead of him again, I think. Um, but Maguire's got to think about it. I don't know whether he's thought about it over the summer. Uh, the feeling is that he will stay. And the feeling is that Ten Hag will keep him because he can't rely on a board that can't do deals quickly to bring in a centre-back. So we'll probably go with what we've got. Um, and in relation to Anthony Martial... Probably the most frustrating of the three, really. I think in McTominay and Maguire's case, you know, they should be ambitious and ask for a move and United can sell them and replace them. Um, but in Martial's case, I mean, I, I don't, I, I think it's the hardest one because I think Eric Ten Hag really likes him, but he's not fit. He's probably not going to be fit for most of next year. Ten Hag already knows that and Ten Hag would like to cash in on him. Say what you like about Maguire and McTominay, but if you get a, an injury crisis in the midfield and in your centre-backs, you can play them. With M Martial, I mean, he, he just won't be fit. And yet he's on a big wage and he's part of the squad, but he's not training at the moment. So the conversation with Anthony Martial hasn't really even been had because he's not even fit. You know, he, he may not even be fit till the end of the month. So any sale of Martial, it's just, you know, Ten Hag can't even have that conversation. So there's about seven players that have been told that they can go. Um, and then there's McTominay, Maguire and Martial, who, let's be honest, are probably all going to say stay unless any of them get ambitious and try and get a move. Um, that's just where we're at. And ultimately, that might please a lot of people. It might displease a lot of people. But what you're actually looking at there is a result of what this football club is. I look at Arsenal, Declan Rice, Timber, Havertz, added to a team that nearly won the league last year. And that's a football club. I look at Manchester United... And you mention the names like Martial, Maguire, McTominay, staying another year. And you go, this is a business decision. This is financials. This is an inability to sell players and bring players in because we're under the vice grip of the Glazers. And they they employ people who just aren't very good at their job. Um, 
it's, it's, it's already gone wrong. It's already gone wrong. Ten Hag wanted Kim Min Jae, he didn't get him. He wanted Rabio, he didn't get him. He, didn't, he wanted Harry Kane, he didn't get him. He wanted Victor Osman, he didn't get him. Um, he quite likes the French centre back, De Sassi at Monaco, he hasn't got him. Uh, he likes Amrabat, he's not got him and he might miss out on him as well. So it's, it, it's a result of where we're at. If we'd gone and got Kim Min Jae and Rabio, I think McTominay and Maguire wouldn't be here. And ultimately, did Ten Hag mess those deals up? No. Did the recruitment team mess them up? Yes. So if you're looking for answers as to why we're keeping players that you would like to move on, who you think you should move on, don't blame the player. Don't blame Ten Hag. Blame recruitment because Ten Hag gave them the names. Kim Min Jae we'd been scouting all season in talks with for the last few months. Messed it up. Rabio tried last summer. Messed it up. This summer, messed it up. Now, look, people might say, well, you didn't want Rabio, Mark. I didn't. But would I rather take Rabio over McTominay and Fred? Yes. And did Eric Ten Hag want him? Yes. Um, the cold, harsh fact is people will try and hide behind Mason Mount and Anana and Hoyland. And I like those players. But you're being spun in the PR cycle because we already know the players that we've missed out on. And they're in positions that we're not even looking to buy people now. Rabio and Kim Min Jae. Um, sticking with the midfield then, oh, sorry, sorry, Jaden Sancho uh, was the other one I was told about. Jaden Sancho is not going anywhere. That's, that's, uh, it's almost hush-hush around Jaden Sancho because you can't even find out whether Ten Hag wants to keep him or not because United is very protective around that story. Um, you know, you've got to speculate on that. There is no, like, he's not for sale. They're not listening to any offers. You know, he's not part of the plan. You, you can't find out what the story is with Jaden Sancho. And I think it's probably quite clever from United because of what happened last year and he missed so much football. Um, I think United are just very... Um, they're very aware they can't sell him anyway because no one will pay for him. And they're also very aware that they don't really want stories out there that he's up for sale because that might be quite damaging to Sancho. Um, so it's quite a mature approach for Bayern United and Ten Hag on this. I mean, ultimately, do you think Ten Hag would sell Sancho if he could? I don't know. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. But United can't even put that sort of story out there because they know that it's not realistic that they can sell him. So therefore, they need to keep him positive. And, you know, San Sancho's had a lot of game time under Ten Hag in the last few months. And I think Ten Hag is just desperately trying to figure out how he can make him, you know, a decent part of the squad and there's certainly no prospect of him leaving in the next few weeks or um, this this summer transfer window. Um, but look, in relation to the midfield, I think that most of the fans think that Amrabat is the only option that Man United have got. There may well be other options out there, but of course Amrabat's relatively cheap. Uh, the problem is, he's you know, he's not a bad signing. Um, he wouldn't be the midfielder I would have gone for. I'd like to see Declan Rice playing for Man United. I'd like to see... Uh, you know, Casido playing for Man United, but we just don't have the funds to do that. So you have to lower your um, sights and Amrabat for what for, for, for the player he is, for the price he is, is, is a decent signing. Uh, the problem we've got is that there's a lot of other clubs looking for players like Amrabat and they've got the money and we don't. So we're in a bit of a risky position here because the player, how much does he want to wait for Man United on the prospect that we might not ever have the money to buy in? You can't, you know, it's a bit like it's a bit like being on the Titanic, isn't it? And uh, you're saying, no, take that lifeboat, take that lifeboat, there'll be one for me. And then suddenly you look and you go, shit, all the lifeboats are gone. Um, it's a risk. It's a real risk. And uh, look, Amrabat's not sinking like the Titanic at Fiorentina. I'm not saying that, but he is going to get offers that he probably should jump on rather than waiting for United. Um, I think United will have the money for Amrabat. And I think, I, th I think if we can make him just wait a little bit, I think there's still a chance. But having said that, Liverpool are very good at recruitment. And Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool could just go in there and say, we've got the money. Why are you waiting for United? We believe we're going to be better than United over the next few years. I mean, look at United. Still owned by the Glazers. What, well, you know, where's all this money coming from? Um, come to us. We've got a spot for you. We're ready to go. So... Yeah, we've got to be very wary of that. I will say Liverpool are not just in for Amrabat. They are still looking at Lavia and a few other players as well. But this is the problem you have when there's a relatively decent player available and you're sitting on your hands. We did see it with Kim Min Jae. Kim Min Jae, oh, we've got that deal, you know. We've been talking to him for ages. We've scouted him for ages. Bayern Munich just come in and go, there we go. 
And why did Bayern Munich do that? Because Upper Meccano cost them the Champions League and they want somebody else to come in and play in that position. And that's what that's what big teams do that want to win big things. Um, so yeah, well, we might need to just keep an eye on that Amrabat deal. The one thing I would say, we'll find out very quickly if Liverpool do want Amrabat because they deal so quickly when they go for a player. Hopefully they won't because I don't think any of the other Premier League rivals that we've got will be looking at Amrabat and I've heard West Ham are interested but I think we'd be able to shield them off for a few weeks but uh, yeah interesting get your comments in below what are your thoughts on Liverpool in for Amrabat uh, what are your thoughts on the transfer window so far and what are your thoughts on what's coming out from the training ground today in relation to conversations with players that are going to go and going to stay as I said Fred, Alanga, Tellez, Bailey, Henderson, Williams, Donny all seven they'll listen to offers for and are looking to offload Maguire, McTominay, Martial all likely to stay because the deals haven't been done to bring players in that they could replace them with so there we go thanks everyone for watching make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe we're back at eight o'clock with the eight o'clock show of course and of course if we ever get a here we go we will go live for that as well take care everyone speak to you in a bit